Winston? Winston? Come back with that leg of lamb. I've just returned from Italy and I host culinary trips all around the world. You can click on the link below and see where all my trips are next year. Come and join me and cook with me somewhere in the world. One of the most popular desserts in Italy is tiramisu. It's a classic, it's an Italian classic. And tiramisu translates to pick me up. And whether it picks you up or not, I think we can all agree that this is the most gorgeous, simple to make, easy to make, dessert and so you can get the kids involved in this too. I think it's a pink me up because of the espresso coffee in there. It's sort of a little tiramisu and like oh, I feel good now. You start off with some espresso coffee and you can brew your own, you can use the powdered instant, mm, not so good. Uh, you can just use regular coffee in there. But into that I add some Kahlua too. Now traditionally the tiramisu doesn't have any alcohol in there at all but uh, recently sort of from the 1960s uh, people started adding uh, marsala wine in there um, or rum uh, but for me Kahlua the coffee uh, liqueur just really gives it that more intense flavor and then we have these little sponge fingers here lady fingers uh, which you can make if you want to and if you were serving them for afternoon tea I'd say yeah go ahead and make them fresh but when they go in the tiramisu and they go really really soft and soggy mm, you're wasting your time making them fresh so we start off with them and we actually dunk them into the coffee and Kahlua be careful you don't dunk the little uh, lady fingers into the coffee for too long because they just collapse you just want to dunk them in and then set them into the dish. Dunk them in, set them in the dish, and that way they don't break up. And then lay them neatly along the bottom of the dish. Told you it was easy. You can use whatever dish you want to, a pretty casserole dish, uh, some fancy plate that you've got that you've been saving, and for gaps like this, just break them in half but what you really want to do is fill the bottom. So squeeze those in there so they fit tight. So that's the base. And as you can see, they're not completely soaked. If they're too soggy, then when we try and spoon it, we just end up with this real mush and we don't want that. So now we can just set that to one side while we make the gorgeous cream that goes on top, the next layer. I'm sharing some of the photos through the video from my last Royal Chef culinary trip because, well, it's Italy and Italy is beautiful and it gets you in the mood for a tiramisu, right? So for the cream, we have some mascarpone, then some eggs, we use the yolks and the whites and we'll separate, and then some sugar, easy to make. We've got to separate the eggs first. <clears throat> when you're separating the eggs, it's easy, and some people will tell you this, that, oh, you just crack them into your hand and then let the whites drop through. You never do that when you're whipping egg whites because you have grease, natural grease, or natural oils in your hand, on your skin. And so that oil gets into the egg whites and they don't whip as stiff. So always, if you're going to do them, just crack them open and just go from shell to shell. We want the yolks in the big one and no, no, we want the whites in the big one and we want the yolks in the small bowl. So no goldfish in with the egg whites, okay? <laughs> no yellow in there at all because it stops the egg whites from beating and whisking and getting the full volume. Another way to separate the yolks from the whites, especially if you've got kids in the kitchen with you, is to take a water bottle. Now make sure that nobody's been drinking from it first and it's nice and clean and get the kids involved and say, how do we get this separated? Well, you take the empty bottle, you squeeze it and then you put it over the yolk and suck the yolk out. 
How easy is that? <laughs> In another mixing bowl, we'll put the egg yolks and some sugar. And then it goes on the machine and we're going to whisk it until it's nice and light and creamy. Once it's nice and light and fluffy and look, doubled in volume, then we can add the mascarpone. Now, first of all, we need to just soften this a little. Stir it around and just soften it a little bit. Not too much, but we want it to mix into that egg mixture. So just give it a stir and then we can start adding it into the egg mix. A little at a time and then mix it. And just repeat that until all of the mascarpone is in there. Once it's all combined and there are no lumps in this gorgeous mix, then you can take that out and leave to one side. Because next, we're going to lighten this mix with the egg whites. So the egg whites go on and we whisk those until they're stiff. Not soft peaks, they've got to be really, really stiff. Once the egg whites are stiff, then we're going to put everything from the whisk, about half of it, into the egg yolk mix. And next, just fold that in together. Now what this does is this softens the mixture a little bit, lightens it up, so that when we add the next egg whites, it makes it much easier to fold in and they don't break up. And we don't lose the volume and we get a nice, fluffy, light, gorgeous tiramisu. So cut and fold that into the mix. And how easy is that for our filling? Fold that all in until all of the egg whites have disappeared. Half of the mix will go now on top of our little fingers. And just spread that out evenly over the top. Tiramisu is said to date back to the 1800s in Treviso in northern Italy and others say no it actually dates back to the 1950s but one thing we do know about tiramisu is that in the 1980s it probably was the most popular dessert in the whole of not just Italy but the UK, the US, Australia. It just sort of hit the world by storm. Now we just repeat what we did before. Sponge fingers over the top. Dip them in the coffee and the Kahlua. And push them down so they're all smooth. Finally, we can top them with the rest of the mix. This recipe will serve eight portions and it keeps for several days too in the refrigerator. Look at that, it's so easy to make. Now you can't eat it right away, you've really got to let that cream and the coffee soak down into those fingers so it makes them really, really soft. So it has to go in the refrigerator for at least three or four hours and probably overnight too. But before it goes in the refrigerator, we've got one more thing to do. A dusting of cocoa powder. The darkest cocoa powder you can find. And plenty of it as well. That creates this gorgeous chocolate topping, but it also makes it bitter on top and it balances out that sweetness of the custard. Into the fridge, at least three hours, overnight if possible. 
I have a tiramisu here that I made earlier on this morning and it's had chance to set up a little. So now I can cut into it. You don't have to cut a portion out. You can actually just serve it at the table like this. It looks beautiful and let everybody just spoon a portion. But I'm going in there and lifting out this gorgeous tiramisu onto the plate. Tiramisu, absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. Come and join me on my next trip somewhere in the world. Click on the link below and come and cook with me. Oh, hope you've enjoyed the video. Give me a thumbs up if you have. Leave a comment below. Maybe you make tiramisu at home. Your recipe's different. Let me know how you make it. Thumbs up and I'll see you again soon. Oh, it's too much.